Mongolia, 90 million years ago, is home to many different types of dinosaurs, and one of the smallest is Gracilaceratops. At about a meter and a half in length and only a few kilograms, they occupy the plentiful small herbivore niche near the bottom of the food chain. It may be surprising to know that these bipedal herbivores are ceratopsians, closely related to some of the most famous dinosaurs like Triceratops and Taurosaurus. Though they don't have horns, Gracilaceratops do have a frill extending from the back of their skulls used for display, and a beak for feeding on tough plants. But unlike their huge relatives, they are mostly defenseless. They stick to the dense undergrowth and rely on their camouflage to avoid predators. One herd is doing just that, feeding on the plentiful cycads and trying to remain as quiet as possible. There are many predators in this forest, and most would consider a Gracilaceratops a light meal. The herd made up of mostly juveniles patiently moves its way through the undergrowth, eyes and ears open for danger. But with so many of them constantly stirring up the foliage by either moving it or feeding on it, it's only a matter of time before something notices. Drawn by the sounds and smell of the herbivores are a pair of Achillobata. These 5 meter predators are large for dromaeosaurs. They are also fast and well armed. The Gracilaceratops detect the predators getting closer and instantly freeze, going completely still as their first line of defense. Hopefully, the Achillobata would walk right past them, but the dromaeosaurs have a keen sense of smell and exceptional eyesight. And as they bob their heads over the low lying vegetation, they grew closer and closer. One of the Achillobators kicks her foot forward suddenly, and a shrill cry of pain rises from the undergrowth. The carnivore has caught one of the Gracilaceratops and pins it to the ground with his foot, driving the sickle claw on his second toe into its back, leaving no way to escape. Its squeals alert the other Gracilaceratops, who go from freezing to fleeing, running as fast as they can to get as far away from the two predators. The Achillobator that has caught the Gracilaceratops does not immediately kill her victim. She begins to feed on the herbivore while it is still alive, not unlike some modern birds of prey. The second Achillobator tries to join in, but he is immediately hissed at by the female, a warning that this meal was hers, and to stay back. The male instead turns around and follows the trail of fleeing Gracilaceratops. The small bipedal herbivores dart and dodge through the low-lying foliage. They aren't as fast in a sprint as some other dinosaurs, but they can turn quickly and easily maneuver around both the vegetation and each other. But the Achillobator is larger, and has a much longer stride, and so quickly catches up to them. But seizing the darting reptiles is a little more challenging. The Gracilaceratops cannot defend themselves against this attacker, so they find something that can. The group ran around a cluster of trees with the Achillobator right behind them, and suddenly, the predator is face to face with a much different herbivore. The small Gracilaceratops swiftly dart around to the back of a Talalarus, a 5 meter long, 700 kilogram ankylosaur, which ignores the Gracilaceratops, but doesn't ignore the Achillobator. The flock rallies behind the ankylosaur with it between them and the predator. The Achillobator stops for a moment, keeping out of range of the Talalarus's club tail. But when he sees the Gracilaceratops standing there, watching him, he tries to go around the armored tank. The Talalarus twists its body so its side faces the carnivore, and as it does, the Gracilaceratops move with it, so they are always on the opposite side of the Ankylosaur. The hunter stops and tries to go the other way, but the Talalarus moves with him, and so do the Gracilaceratops. They are safe, as long as the Ankylosaur doesn't let the predator get past. The carnivore is frustrated and hungry, but he may be able to trick the slow Talaros and get to the flock behind it. The Achillobator fakes a lunge at its tail, but then jinxes the other way, running past its head. It passed the defender and opened its jaws ready to seize the closest Gracilaceratops, which cry out in alarm. Right before it bites into its prey, the club tail of the Talaros swings around and collides with the carnivore's skull. The impact crushes the carnivore's head and sends its body sailing backwards, dead before it hits the ground. There is an eerie silence as the Gracilaceratops barely even saw what happened. After a long moment, the Talalaros snorts in annoyance, eager to return to feeding. The small Gracilaceratops give the armored herbivore some space and move back into more secure cover. 
Some approached the corpse of the Akilobator, however. After sniffing the very dead carnivore, the little herbivores begin to bite into its flesh. Though their diet is almost exclusively plants, they, like almost all herbivores, do need to scavenge some meat in order to get the nutrients their diet can't provide. Being so low on the food chain, scavenging can be risky, as the longer a body is present, the more likely it is other species are to find it. So with a fresh body, the grey Ciliceratops take a small amount of meat as quickly as they can, before anything else comes to scavenge, or feed on them. Hello fellow travellers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the smallest Ceratopsians, Gracilla Ceratops. Gracilla Ceratops was first discovered in 1971 in Mongolia, and was originally thought to be Microceratops. However, it would be later re-described and found to be its own species, Gracil Ceratops mongoliensis. The genus name comes from the Latin Gracilis, referring to how slender it was, and the Greek Ceres, meaning horn. The species name is of course in relation to its place of discovery, Mongolia. This is the only known specimen of Gracilla ceratops, which includes a fragmented skull, vertebra, shoulder, parts of the arms and hips, and parts of the legs and ribs. It lived in the late Cretaceous between 96 and 89 million years ago. The fossil individual is estimated to have grown to 60 centimeters long, with a skull 20 centimeters in length, and weighed between 2 and 9 kilograms. However, this individual is not fully grown, and adults of this species have been calculated to have reached up to 2 meters in length. Gracilla ceratops belongs to the ceratopsian family. For those who don't know, ceratopsians are the horned or head-crested dinosaurs, and include species such as Triceratops, Protoceratops, Pachyrhinosaurus, and Pentaceratops. Gracilla ceratops is one of the most basal of this family, being small and still moving on its hind legs. As the name suggests, Gracilla ceratops was very gracile, being lightweight and likely fleet of foot like its Ornithischian ancestors, but it also had the beak and head crest that cemented as a ceratopsian. The beak likely evolved in order for it to tackle tougher plants, allowing it to shear through plant matter before chewing the food in the back of its jaws. Though it was bipedal, it may have used its forearms to brace itself against the ground when, say, lowering itself or pushing up off of the ground, or it may have used its hands in order to maneuver plants when feeding. The small crest on its head would have been almost useless for defense, so likely it first evolved as a display structure which is something the entire family would continue even as they became giants and dominated the land. Gracilla ceratops is a great example of a more basal member of a dinosaur family, and shows that like most groups, they started off small and bipedal, before eventually growing in size to their more recognizable members. Some of the species it lived alongside include Gobihadros, a hadrosaur, Segnosaurus, a therizinosaur, Talalarus, an ankylosaur, a cactu, a sauropod, a kilobator, a dromaeosaur, an electrosaurus, a tyrannosaurid. From the little we know, Gracilla ceratops was a small species that lived amongst giants, and likely filled the niche of small, plentiful herbivore that relied more on its speed than its strength to escape predators. But what do you think of Gracilla ceratops? And for my question of the week, how large do you think a ceratopsian could get before it had to become quadrupedal? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.